I invite you to be in prayer with me. My Heavenly Father, You are so good. And during this Advent season, we think, we think of that moment that you sent to us your Son, Jesus, in flesh and blood, to walk this earth and ultimately to die our death. That's how much you love us. And that's who we are. We are loved by you. So, Heavenly Father, may each and every person here this morning know that love. And may this Christmas season be about the love that was shown to us through that tiny baby born in a manger some 2,000 years ago. It's in his name we pray. Amen. I love this time of year for, for many reasons. We cut down our tree yesterday and decorated the tree. I love the, the holidays. And, and, and also here in Indiana, maybe it's just kind of the way I'm, I'm brought up. I mean, I, I am a Hoosier through and through. And I, I love this time of year because it's also the beginning of high school basketball, right? <laughs> You, get, you gotta love high school basketball, especially, <clears throat> especially in Indiana. And really one of my favorite movies of all time is, is the movie Hoosiers. I, 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 love, I love Hoosiers, and there's a lot of great scenes in that movie. But one of my favorite scenes, scenes comes toward the end of the movie. Hickory and uh, South Bend Central are tied. It's 40 to 40. It's the state championship. There's 19 seconds left on the clock. Hickory gets a steal. The coach who's played by Gene Hackman calls a timeout. And he gathers his players together. And he calls the, the picket fence. Buddy's going to come around the, the picket fence and, and pass to Merle, who's going to take the last shot. Now, if you've, if you've seen the movie, if you know the story, Merle is not the star of the team. <laughs> Jimmy Chitwood is the star of the team. And according to the coach, Jimmy is going to be a decoy as Merle takes the last shot. And as soon as he calls the play, the players look at him as if he is crazy. <laughs> I mean, he calls this play, and, and all, all you can see on the faces of the player is un players is uncertainty, unease about what is about to transpire because they know the best player isn't going to be taking the shot. Merle's going to be taking the shot. Even, even in the movie, uh, Gene Hackman describes the play. And he, he talks about Buddy coming around the picket fence and passing to Merle. And, and when you watch the movie, I don't know if you've ever noticed this before, but when you watch the movie, as soon as the coach calls the play, Merle's head goes straight down. <laughs> Almost as if to say, are you crazy? You mean I'm taking the last shot? So he calls the play, all there is is uncertainty, doubt, silence. Needless to say, Jimmy Chitwood has a word for the coach. Let's watch that last scene of the movie.
I was 16 years old when that movie came out. And I can't tell you how many days straight after watching that movie, I was outside with my basketball, right? Pretending I was Jimmy Chitwood. And I'd always, before shooting, I always quote, you know, I'll make it. <laughs> and I love it in the movie, you know, Jimmy Chitwood, he, he's not like, coach, I can make it. He's not, coach, I'll, I'll try to make it. He's, I'll make it. And as soon as he says it, I mean, just the demeanor of all of the players change. Because now they know the star of the team, Jimmy Chitwood's going to be taking the last shot. And he just told us, I'll make it. You know, there's something to be said about knowing who the star of the team is. There's something to be said about knowing who the star of the show is. Just ask Merle. <laughs> Or in the case of what I really want to talk about this morning, John the Baptist. Now, obviously, any analogy can only be taken so far, right? I mean, in basketball, sometimes the star of the, uh, the team will pass it off so someone else can have an easier shot, right? I get that, okay? But when it comes to John the Baptist and when it, when it comes to us, it's imperative that we know who the star of the show is. This redemptive story that God has given to us. We need to know who the star is, and it's not us. It's not me, it's not you. We are role players. The star, the star of this redemptive story is Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ. And maybe no one knew that better than John the Baptist. And so as we begin this Advent season, as we journey toward Christmas, you know, I just want to lift up John. Because in every step of John's life, he knew, he knew who the star of the show was. He knew that he was simply a role player and that his life was to be pointed toward Jesus. From the very beginning, from the very beginning, John knew this. And when I say beginning, I mean like very beginning, like in his mother's womb beginning. There's this episode in Luke chapter 1 verses 39 through 45, and I'll read it to you here in just a moment. But uh, Mary has gone to visit Elizabeth, their relatives. Mary is in her first trimester. Elizabeth is in her last trimester. So they come together to provide help and support for one another. Well, here is Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. You know, I often hear um, women who are pregnant talk about their, their baby moving and, and kicking, and when Marianne was pregnant with our kids, every now and then she'd have me come over and put my hand on her, on her belly, and I'd feel one of my children kick or, or move. I, I don't think I've ever heard a, a mother say, wow, that baby is leaping for joy in my womb, right? But what a great picture. What a great picture of John inside his mother's womb, this unborn child leaping for joy at the presence of of Jesus. Even as an unborn child, John knew who the star of the story was. He leaped for joy at the presence of Jesus. Skip forward 30 years, right? John's out in the desert. He's wearing camel, camel skins, camel hair. He's eating locusts. He's eating honey. I mean, he must have been quite the sight, but we're also told he was quite the preacher. John could preach. I mean mega church preach. I mean all of the people were coming to John to hear him preach. So much so that some of them began to wonder if John was the star of the show, if John was the Messiah. And this is what he tells them in Luke chapter 3, verses 15 through 18. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. 
He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. And so they're coming to John, wanting to, to make him the Messiah, wanting him, wanting him to be the star of the show. And instead, John reflects that toward Jesus. He starts preaching the good news of the one to come after him. John's desire, John's only desire. To make Jesus the star, the star of the show. A few chapters later, what we discover is that Jesus begins to preach, right? And people are starting to go to Jesus rather than to John. It's almost as if, you know, a brand new church was opening up there and, and everybody was leaving their old churches and going to the new church. As you might expect, John's board of, directors were, board of directors were a little worried about this, you know. How are we going to keep the heat on? How are we going to keep the lights shining? Everybody's leaving. And this is what John says. And this is John chapter 3, verses 22 through 30. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside, where he spent some time with them and baptized now John also was baptizing at Enon near Salem because there was plenty of water and people were coming and being baptized. This was before John was put in prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who is with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, Jesus, look, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him. To this John replied, a person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and is now complete. He must become greater and I must become less. So John's ministry has just dried up. The people have left him. Not only that, John's just not losing a job. Soon John will lose his head because he will refuse to stop preaching and bringing the good news of Jesus Christ. Yet he says, My joy is now complete. He must become greater, and I must become less. Think about that for a second. As we journey, as we journey toward Christmas, right? I mean, what, I mean, the world will tell you, right? I mean, the world is going to tell you in these next few weeks. The world will say, if you want peace, if you want joy, if you want happiness, guess what? You need more. More stuff. More parties. Turn on the TV. It will tell you you need more in order to be happy. Yet John tells us in our text, if you want to be happy... Be prepared to become less. To become less. It's amazing. I mean, when you look at John's life, it's, it's amazing that every step he finds peace. And he finds peace in Jesus. He's in the darkness of a womb, right? He's in the darkness of a womb, yet he leaps for joy at the presence of Jesus. He's in the desert wearing camel skins, eating honey, eating locusts, yet he preaches the good news. Why? Because of Jesus. His ministry has dried up. He's lost his job. He's about to be killed. Yet his joy is complete. Why? Because Jesus is becoming more. Jesus is becoming more.
How about we make a pact this Christmas season, right? Let us. And everything we do and everything we say, let, let us. Let us be the role players. Who know who the star of the show really is. Who know who the, the redemptive story is all about. So we are more concerned about leaping for joy in Jesus' presence. So we are more concerned about preaching the good news to our neighbors so that we are more concerned about becoming less so that Jesus can become more. Rather than listening to the world. A world that tells us if you want joy, you have to have this stuff. I think Jesus puts it very succinctly. In John 16, verse 33. I've told you these things so that in me, not your presence, not your parties, so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. I mean, Jesus was a, was a realist, right? I mean, it, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. So let us party. Let us leap for joy. But let us do it at the name of Jesus. Let us, let us preach the good news. And let us find complete joy, not in having more, but in shedding the light on Jesus. Would you please pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, we come to you today in, in thanksgiving in our hearts. Dear God, fortunately, oh man, we look at this world and it's, it's become about everything but you and your Son. It's become about us having more. It's about us doing more. When in reality, you probably just want us to do less so that we have the time just to worship you and to praise you and to come before you on, on bended knee and say thanks for being our good, good Father and for loving us for finding purpose and meaning in that love. Help us this Christmas season to make the star of the party, the star of the show, the, the star of this redemptive gospel, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand with me as we join together in our closing song?